If you know man at it, I'm not done. If you know man at it, if you know man at it, if you know man at it. Original dance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own DJ edits and remixes inside Ableton Live 12.3, which is currently on beta. I'll be using tools from Deviant Audio, including my new Junglism Serum 2 preset pack to break down the process step by step. To demonstrate, I'll be editing Subfocus's latest B-Port number one, Original Dawn. But the concepts here can apply to any track you want to flip for your set. All right, so first and foremost, we are using Ableton Live 12.3, which is currently on public beta. There's a couple of cool new features that will assist us in creating a remix or edit like this one. So importing the track into Ableton. Now, most online shops such as Beatport, when you buy a track, you'll get the tempo and key. So this track is at 174 beats per minute, and it's in the key of F minor. So make sure you enter in the BPM before importing the track. That'll just make the process a lot smoother. And then we up the track here and clicking on the track, we can right click it. And Ableton now has a new feature here called separate stems to new audio tracks. And this is real neat. You can now split it into various parts, including the vocals, drums, bass, and others. If you want a quick render, then choose high speed. But for higher quality, I would probably choose this option. Less artifacts, but takes more time to create the stems. All right, after a couple of minutes, we now have the stems. And I've just separated the intro and the breakdown in this aqua color and the main drop in purple. So it's easier for us to see where we're going to be remixing or editing the track. And here's a quick preview just to show you the quality of the stems. Stems. Done. Anyway, you see me, no me, you're the champion. So I'd say the quality is not bad. I wouldn't say it's perfect. There definitely is artifacts if you listen carefully, but it is good enough for remixing or editing, especially if you're putting sounds on top, you can easily disguise the artifacts that you hear in the vocals and whatnot. And let's just mute the drums and bass section since we're gonna be adding our own on top. So we only have the vocals and the synths. Anyway, you see me, me you're the champion. So the concept I had when I think of this edit was that everyone was already playing this in the clubs. So when dropping it last weekend, I wanted it to hit different, to give a feeling of unpredictability when it dropped. And it certainly had that effect when it did drop. So my idea was to totally change up the drums and the bass for more of a jungle vibe. Inspiration for this, I would say, is programmed by Chase and Status. So let's proceed to add our own drums. So let's use my new Junglism Serum 2 preset pack to create the drums. This pack contains tons of break presets with embedded MIDI clips, which makes it easy to create your own patterns by triggering patterns on the fly, or you can write them in the key roll. So here's one preset. Here's the funky drummer break. learn more about jungleism, check the link down below. So I think we're gonna use the acid track Amen preset from the pack. It's a nice tough Amen. And we're gonna be employing some of these patterns using the key roll. Now each key on octave negative two triggers a different pattern in the preset. So the first pattern, we'll play this pattern here. And this key over here, plays a snare pattern. So we can do something like this where we can do this pattern. So two kicks and then repeat a snare with a dotted quarter note, you get this. I call this the double kick extended step up. If you want to learn about all the different patterns of drum and bass, check this video up here. Now I wanted this break to have some cymbal clangy rides to it. So I'm playing the Trayman preset from Junglism as well. Playing the same pattern so it's synced up. Watch the pads. And just note that within each preset, you have eight macros and I programmed it with tons of different effects mapping so you can shape your break and create cool automations. I love playing with the frequency shift and convolve macro effects. Also, I programmed this break to switch between the Dark Soldier and Trayman. So if you have this pack, so if you have the pack, you can do some cool stuff like this.
And to make the drums punch a little bit, I'm using this new break called the Backstreet Break, and this is forthcoming on the Acid Lab Volume 2 sample pack. Acid Lab Volume 1 was super popular. If you haven't grabbed Acid Lab Volume 1 yet, you can learn more about that down in the links below as well. And we're just going to cut up this break and just place this section here. We have double kick and then the extended step out with the dotted quarter note snares just like that. And then we have the break sounding like this. And then layering it with the aim and breaks. I've also added the killer hearts tape stop effect at the end of the phrase for a cool effect like this. All right, let's move on to adding some bass. So the bass, I wanted something more like a sub bass with that added harmonic on top. So I'm using the sub ja no preset from Gnarly Volume 2, which is inspired by Dillinger's Jano Ya Big. Now I've taken that preset and edited a little bit by adding this additional harmonic from the harmonic series smoothed wave table. This is a great wave table for adding kind of the wonky harmonics on top of your sub bass. A lot of current wub step producers use this. I'm calling it wub step because it has that wonky wub wub sound to it. But yeah, this sound is used a lot to create those wubs. Then I changed the filters and some of the automations for a bass that sounds like this. There's a bit more of a pitch bend as we get into the bass and I'm playing two notes. And this is what we have with the drums and bass together. And then for the next four bars, I want a little bit of a change up and added energy. So I have to switch up adding the Demon Funk break from the Fragment Sample Pack by DJ Crystal. And that's also available at DeviantAudio.com. This is the break. Now at the end of the phrase, I want to add a change up with a reverse snare. So we're going to take this very last snare here, cut it up, shift R to reverse it. And then we want to add three of them like this. Now, I think I want it to go earlier, so we'll start it around here. Now with reverses, they sound better if they start a bit earlier. So instead of starting it here like that, we can cut it a bit short like that, and then just move it up like that. That tends to sound better. It could even be shorter. Just play it to your ear and find what is the best length for your desired track. And then I took the samples of the reverse snares, pitched it up by six, and we have this. It just makes for a more cleaner and synced up sound to the reverse hits. Now, when doing edits like this, you have to be faithful and respectful to the original in order to make it sound cohesive. So listening to the chord progressions and even the bass lines and synth leads, we use that as a cue in terms of how we can employ other sounds on top. So listening to this part, That's a really good lead. So during this switch up, we're going to employ just a sub bass to fill in the bottom end. You can probably barely hear that because it's a pure sub, but it's basically following that a synth note. And then at the very last two bars, I created this really basic screechy laser bass using the additive talk waveform and using a sine wave. <laughs> And I'm creating some movement by using the asymmetrical alt warp here, which is just a popular way to add movement lately. And then we just have a sub sine wave as the sub here. So playing with the drums and synths, we have this. So that was the first eight bars. The next eight bars is pretty much a copy and paste of A and B here, except at the very end of the phrase, I added another two breaks from volume two of Acid Lab, this section here. Just a little nice switch up and then using this famous vocal sample from DJ Gunshot Wheel and Deal. And actually, I want to ask you guys a question. There's an old school jungle track. It's a classic jungle track that has this sample or another sample that's very much like that. It goes, hey, hey, hey. And then the jungle amens and bass drops. It's killing me. I can't figure out what that track is. It's like a super big track. It's at the tip of my tongue. But I can't seem to figure that out. So if you guys know what track I'm thinking about, please let me know. Hey, hey, hey. 
And then the following 16 bars is more of a rollout. So we're just using the B section with the crystal break and looping it. We remove the main bass. And we're just playing the sub bass and laser bass section we have in section B of the edit. And that is pretty much it. One more thing about Ableton Live 3 is the new splice integration, which makes the workflow a lot more easier. You can now access your splice library directly. I've always found it cumbersome before when you had to flip between the splice window and Ableton, but now you have it integrated and it makes accessing your samples a lot easier. The game changer for me here though, is the window of search with sound. And this is a cool feature. Essentially what you can do is you can drag different layers of your track and pull it into Splice. It'll then analyze the sample for its key, its BPM, even core progressions within the loop and find relevant samples. You can even group an entire section by highlighting that section and dragging it right into Splice. It's gonna export that into audio as a reference to find compatible samples. So here's provide a bunch of samples to choose from. Let's filter for synth. I like the sound here. It has this nice deep, almost Persian influence to it. So let's pull it in and listen to it in the context of our track. Really dope, it really helps with the composition process, especially if you're creating remixes, you can easily identify samples that you can potentially use. All right, now to the final part, mastering and track. When doing edits, you gotta make sure it sounds loud enough, especially when you're splitting it into stems, you're muting certain parts, the loudness is lost in the track. So I'm using Ulean Loudness Meter, which is a free plugin to measure the loudness of the track. And measuring the original track it is up at negative 2.5 lus, which is super loud. It seems like the standard for loudness is getting greater and greater. So we're gonna have to find a way to match this loudness. So what I'm doing is on the master, I first employing Pro C2, and this is only to tame some of the peaks. The ratio is a very low at two to one, at the threshold is at negative 21, and then I have a slower attack at 72 milliseconds, and the release is at uh, auto. I'm using one of the uh, actual mastering presets in Pro C, which is the EDM Punch 01BM, and I adjusted some of the settings, and then I'm using standard clip to get more headroom by clipping off some of those peaks. And then I have ozone maximizer pushing it by 7.5 and this is a limiter. And just to make sure your track is head to head with the original, you can employ span to measure the frequency spectrum of your track. Just, just to make sure that your bass uh, hits the same as the original. You can see my bass is at around negative 34 dB here on the reading here, which is pretty much like the original track as well. So I know it's pretty head to head. And as I was, as I was doing this, I was having trouble hitting that negative 2.5 left. So what I did was pretty just rough, rugged and raw, just employing utility at the end of the chain, pushing it an additional 1.5 dB. Yes, I know I will be redlining, but from what I understand, it is okay. We're working in the digital domain at 24-bit audio. There's actually a really cool video by uh, Viper Active, who is a talented kind of trap EDM producer. He was on T-Pain's channel. He was talking about his mastering process, how he simply just pushes his master up by like over 12 or 15 dB. You got to be careful about how you mix the track so it doesn't distort when you do that. It's quite kind of neat and reminds me of how I used to do it back in the day as well where we didn't really care about the master. We actually wanted it to clip. So we would push that to the red to the max. So I don't know what is right or wrong when it comes down to it. If it sounds good, it just sounds good. All right, before we play this track, I'm gonna let you know that this is a personal edit. I don't think I'll ever be releasing it. It's just for myself. 
in respect to Sub Focus, who did the original, which is a sick ass track. I just wanted to have something a little different when I played it at a club. So this is just for me. So just so you know, for those of you guys who are sneaky, I've changed the tempo throughout the track. So even if you rip it, you're not going to be able to play it. Haha. <laughs> oh, and just one more thing. Since we're on live 12.3, there's also a new feature in auto pan. There's now a tremolo mode, which is really cool. You can do some cool kind of uh, tremolo or volume effects. Previously, we had to do it through panning by clever really adjusting the settings. However, now we have a dedicated tremolo setting. Also, there's some cool new features and panning, which I still have to explore. I'm just using this at the end of the last four bars before the drop on the synth stem to add a bit of a great gated effect like this. Instead of this. Just adds more tension and energy right before the drop. All right, without further ado, let's hear from the top. Original my champion Born in the seventh run You feel no man at the down go gun You feel no man at the down go gun You feel no man at the down go gun You feel no man at the You feel no man at the You feel no man at it Original Dan When you be a me no me and the champion Come back on the yes I need a fair run you know we want the cannon But you can imagine about the rich in our town Phenomenal it and log on Sub focus and I run it on track So put up on the hand if you are real bad man Show respect to the rich in our town Oh yeah, that's sub focused original Dawn with the junglism effect. Hope you guys enjoyed watching me editing Self Focus's latest track, Original Dawn. And shouts out to the Dawn himself, Self Focus, for creating such an amazing track. Make sure you learn the concepts here from editing the stems to adding your own take, and adding that sense of unpredictability when the listener is used to the original track. My name is Stranger, music producer of over 25 years with releases on Metalheads and Hospital Records. If you want to support this channel, check out DeviantAudio.com for sample packs, pre set packs and Ableton kits to help you along your journey. You can learn more down in the links below. See me create more drum and bass bangers. Check this playlist up here. To learn more about my jungleism preset pack and what you can do with it, check this playlist up here. Alright guys, thanks for watching and until the next video, stay creative and peace out.